Masumi is a girl who suspects that the newest addition in her class, Rima, a girl whose beauty infatuates the entire classroom, is a vampire visiting her at night after she wakes one morning to discover a strange hole-shaped scar on her neck. A group of young women, speculating on the history of a local abandoned mansion, decide to explore it to confirm whether it is truly haunted. Within both short stories, the truth is more horrifying than previously imagined. This is now Koomi's The Curse of Kazuo Umetsu, an OVA adapting two tales from manga author Kazuo Umetsu, whose resemblance serves as the narrator introducing and concluding the short tales of terror. A low-budget anime, likely a pilot for a series never greenlit, with an aesthetic so grubby that it's not unlike the contents of some cursed VHS tape. The Curse of Kazuo Umetsu is a small-scale horror anthology, providing two tales, What Will Camro Reveal? and The Haunted Mansion, which are filled with a morbid imagination bringing a unique approach to body horror via vampiric legend and supernatural suspicion, giving the little-known OVA a surprising memorable impression that isn't dissimilar to the visual horrors found within the works of Junji Ito, David Cronenberg, and even Nobuhiko Obayashi's Haozu, equally campy and dreary. With an atmosphere verging on both the melodramatic and the haunting, The Curse of Kazuo Umetsu plays on the anxiety of scars of unknown origin. Within what will the camera reveal, Masumi is haunted by the strange nature of her newly received neck scar, which bleeds in the morning. And within the haunted mansion, Miko, after having experienced true horror within the haunted mansion she explored with her friends, after doubting whether the experience was reality or a vivid nightmare, comes to recognise that her friends all have scars from their experience urban exploring. The Curse of Kazuo Ometsu revels in the mystery of strange scars with uncertain reasons as to why they were gained. The uneasy quality found within body horrors relating to the lack of certainty we have with our own bodies. This exploration of body horrors further reinforced in what will the camera reveal. It is revealed that Masami's mysterious neck scar is recorded on videotape transforming into a bestial set of teeth. A jaw filled with spiders seeking Masami's classmate Rima to devour her beauty. A curse. An uncontrollable action motivated by subconscious jealousy and Masami's insecurity, as well as unrealistic beauty standards expected of young adults. Within the haunted mansion, as Miko wakes up in the morning, after the exploration of the mansion, where she witnessed the nightmarish visage of a ghost heavily burned, her face melted as the ghost dismantles Miko's friends limb by limb. She sees a brief glimpse of her face possessed by the spirit. Uncertain whether the experience was a vivid nightmare, when the group of girls returned back to the mansion, Miko discovers not only was it a horrific reality, but that her body also houses the spirit which frightened them so much the night before. The initial discovery acts as a confirmation of reality of the horrors which this group experienced, yet Miko was clearly possessed the night before, as the glimpse in her bathroom mirror confirms that her body now no longer belongs to herself, but to the vicious spirit within her. Both characters, Masami and Miko, are kept within a state of uncertainty regarding their full truths surrounding their bodies, and once they both discover what their bodies are keeping from them, it's already too late. Like the real-life discovery of a life-threatening terminal condition, Masami and Miko are no longer in control of their bodies, no longer with any sense of bodily autonomy, as hellish vampirism and possession take full control. The horror of the Curse of Kazuo Metsu therefore relies on the insecurity and anxiety around how little we may know about our own bodies. Like Masami and Miko's own experiences with the supernatural impact on their bodies, what if we were to fall into some uncertain condition? The terror of whether the issue causing illness and sickness has been found too late. Nobody quite expects to have a vampiric parasite within their neck, or to be possessed by the spirit of a burn victim, but the experience of uncertainty, anxiety, the act of not knowing, when one's body begins to behave in strange ways is something most viewers can relate to. While the curse of Kazuo Umetsu plays with the supernatural, its sense for body horror is certainly relatable. In conclusion, the curse of Kazuo Umetsu, a low-budget, mostly ignored OVA, sitting at just slightly over 40 minutes in length, 
mixes supernatural chills with genuine body horror that offers a layer of surprising relatability. Despite also the curse of Kazuo Ometsu's distinctive campy melodramatic nature of over-exaggerated reactions of fear and absurd dialogue, a flawed piece of animation, its true strength is how its body horror reflects our own bodily anxieties surrounding sickness. Like the grisly fates of Masami and Miko, how in control of our own bodies are we really?